really do appreciate and echo the sentiments that uh, others have expressed in allowing the public to have input into this. I'm a veteran of redistricting. I uh, started after the 1980 census. I've appeared at legislative hearings in the past. I've filed written testimony. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't done much good. Uh, I'm one of those people in Wayne County who believes very strongly that we have been disenfranchised by being carved up into three different senatorial districts. I'm not sure whose idea that was, but I don't think it was a very good one. And I don't think it's working very well. Now, none of this is to say anything to reflect upon Senator Jenkins or Senator Plyman. But just to show you the absurdity of it, I grew up with Senator Plyman. We went to school together. He's younger than I am, and I chose. But I, have, but I have the utmost respect for the senator. But even though we grew up together, and we reside within a few miles of each other, he's not my senator. It makes no sense. So, I know that you, I'll keep my comments brief, I know that you traditionally keep hands off the House of Delegates, but I support single member House uh, districts and I will be testifying to that in some fashion. But as far as Wayne County goes, I, I plead with you, restore Wayne County. If some other county wants the pleasure of being divided into three or four parts, they can have that title. We've had it for the past 30 years, and I'm ready to relinquish it. My last comment revolves around Kanawha County. And uh, Kanawha County is treated, I have nothing against the good people of Kanawha County, but it's treated as if it's sacrosanct. It's untouchable in past redistricting, even though it's immensely unfair to the rest of us. We have overlapping districts in Kanawha County, which means that that county is not cut. Now, I realize the federal district courts have ruled that that was acceptable, but I also realize the United States Supreme Court has, has said that if a voter's vote is two times or five times or ten times, counts more than somebody else's, that that is not one man, one vote. And that's what you have. When the residents of Kanawha County go to the polls, they elect two senators. Everybody else in the state elects one senator. To me, that says they have twice as much impact on elections as we do. So, again, I'm not taking anything away from Kanawha County. If you would like to retain that uh, senatorial district, then I would suggest that your bare minimum should be 193,000, which is the population of Kanawha County. Put Wayne County, Cabell County, and Putnam County together, and you have about 194. Give us four senators. And two of them, only two of them would be able to be elected from any one county. It's as fair as it gets. And you can do that in other places, in the Eastern Panhandle. You could do it in North Central West Virginia, perhaps in the Northern Panhandle. The more rural areas, we probably aren't going to be able to do something like that. But if Kanawha County is not touched, then at least give us the courtesy of being treated the same and give us four senators. Thank you. I have been working redistricting for 30 years. Uh, I, I'm uh, for single member districts. And uh, let me first uh, start with the uh, standard in the state constitution for state senatorial districts. Notwithstanding the fact that the federal requirement may let you get by with, uh, with the so-called 10% variance, which is that the, small, the least populous district has to be at least 90% as much as the most populous district, the state constitution requires that you approach numerical perfection. But, but, the, but the way the state constitution is written, the districts are supposed to be compact, and they're supposed to be as nearly as may be, which means numerical perfection. But the one thing the state constitution said was you couldn't cross county lines. So after the decision of Baker v. Carr by the U.S. Supreme Court nearly 50 years ago, when the federal courts decided that uh, redistricting uh, challenges to the redistricting or non-redistricting of state legislatures was a justiciable controversy. Uh, we have had to, to, uh, to cut some county lines. But what I try to do is come up with uh, a, uh, 
a plan for the state senate and also for the uh, congressional districts. And I'm also working in the House of Delegates district. So I've already submitted three different plans for the congressional districts, which I've already uh, I've submitted in previous meetings. I understand they're on the uh, website of the redistricting committee. And uh, I'm working on 100 single member districts. Um, I got a few weeks ago, I got the information uh, from a good person. Uh, she got me the, uh, you know, got me the, the populations per precinct, or they call them VDTs, which is, it's supposed to be voting district, but apparently when they came up with the thing they were afraid to call VD, so well now you got STD, so I don't know if that does any good, but anyway, they're trying to, not to, to embarrass anybody. But you can look those things up on the map. You can go to it. There's a reference map on the internet, and you can look up what your precinct is. Now, some precinct lines have changed since the uh, the map was put together. But basically, the precincts are are uh, correct. But what I, let me talk about single member districts first. West Virginia is the second most backward state in the country. Next to New Hampshire, it's most backward. But New Hampshire has a House of Delegates in terms of single member districts. New Hampshire has 400 people in a slower house. So if you set aside states that have fewer than 400 people in their lower house, you know, West, West Virginia only has 100 in the House of Delegates, we're the most backward. And I live in, I'm, I'm also not speaking on behalf of the Democratic Executive Committee, but I'm a member of the County Executive Committee in Kanawha County, and I'm a Democrat. And uh, I've been pushing for single member districts for 30 years. In my own hometown of South Charleston, we tried to go to single member wards. The, uh, the a bipartisan majority of the city council was opposed to it because it meant a lot of them would not be able to come back or they would have to run against their friends if they both want to be on the council. And they refused to go along. We have initiative referendum and recall in our city charter in South Charleston. I got the petition back in 1983. It was passed by the voters of South Charleston in 1983. And we have eight single member wards. Uh, and I've been pushing for single member districts since then, 1990, I, I came up with a plan, uh, had a plan produced with, which would have given Kanawha County 12 single member districts. It obviously wasn't adopted. But the person who was pushing single member districts for the House of Delegates uh, after the 9th Census was a gentleman named Charles Dameron, and I believe he was from Leon in Mason County. He's now deceased. But he basically he wanted to have 100 single member districts for West Virginia. This is not a Democratic issue or Republican issue. 40 of the 50 states have only single member districts in their lower house. We are next to New Hampshire the worst. And I live in the most, the, the, the biggest in terms of members of a, of a multi member district in the whole uh, county. And I'll make this point, I'm in Kanawha County, but I'll do it just to give you an idea. If you all, if you all watch the Waltons, you know, you got, uh, you got uh, uh, Esther and Zebulon and Olivia and John and John Boyd. Imagine they lived in Kanawha County. That would be the only place in the United States, other than New Hampshire, that's all, that seven of them, assuming they were adults, could all run for the House of Delegates from the same house and be elected and serve in, in the same house. It, it illustrates what is wrong. The idea is we should have single member districts across the state, different neighborhoods. Take Kanawha County, where I live. I live in South Charleston. Uh, I, I uh, work for the Democrats who ran for the 30th district and for the other people. I mean, I support my party, but that doesn't mean I'm for multi-member districts. St. Albans, where my ex-wife is from, it has, uh, if you put St. Albans and St. Albans High School attendance there, it's something like uh, in the neighborhood of 20 to 25,000 people. They have nobody from that area who is a member of the House of Delegates. The last person from, that, from Kanawha County from that area was Dick Henderson, who's now deceased. He's a Republican member of the House of Delegates. The bridge between St. Albans and Nitro is named after him. Then let's take the Upper Kanawha Valley. That's called the Riverside High School Attendance Area. That area, that's where you have a lot of straight Democratic votes that get Democratic politicians elected countywide in Kanawha County. In my lifetime, the only two people I knew or was acquainted with who were from the Upper Kanawha Valley were uh, Leo Kopelman, a Republican from East Bank, and Rudy Secrets, a Democrat from the town of Be the city of Bell. So it's been years since either of those people was on the uh, on the House of Delegates. So we have several people from Charleston, two from South Charleston. I've already started working my plan for 100 single member districts. Uh, I hope to get a sponsor. Uh, that person said he would agree to sponsor it. Uh, and I have already worked on Mason County. Mason County should. 
I had one plan I've already worked out in Mason County. You'd have one single member district that would be holding within Mason County, and another single member district would be mostly Mason County and part of Jackson County. It certainly is capable of being done, and it's long past time. So let's talk about the state center redistricting now. Now, I, I submitted a plan uh, over a month ago, but I didn't have all the, uh, there were only seven counties I was going to divide, and I didn't have the access to the precinct data then, so I asked the Senate Redistricting Committee to forward it to Joe Vaughn's office and gave her instructions. And then, after that, I got the information, so I submitted a revised plan. Well, our stuff kind of crossed in the email, so the, uh, Joe Vaughn and her people were very good in, in following my instructions, but before, I, I, uh, before they sent to me, I changed a few little things. Let me say first, since we're in Cabell County, I agree with the gentleman who said they should not split Wayne County. Wayne County should be kept intact. In my opinion, every county in the state, except uh, that it has less than 134th of the state's population, it makes no sense to divide the smaller counties if you're sitting and representing people as opposed to protecting incumbent, uh, incumbent legislators. So before Baker v. Carr was assigned, all of Wayne and all of Cabell were one state senatorial district. When the legislature started carving things up, they, they, I think they split the wrong way. See, I think you split the big counties. If you have to split a county, don't split the small counties. Split the big counties. Split Kanawha County. Split Cabell County, split uh, Montgomery County. Montgomery County and Cabell County each have a little bit over 96,000 residents. Well, that's about one and three quarters times the population per state center. So what I say is, change what you did 20 or 30 years ago, put all of Wayne County and part of Cabell County together as a senatorial district, and put the other part of Cabell County in with Lincoln and several other counties. And that way, not only will Wayne County be put together again, but Cabell County will have a shot at two senators. A guarantee of one and a shot at two. So basically what I did in my map was to put all of Wayne County, and all, uh, and certainly Huntington is both in Wayne and in Cabell, so you put all of Huntington in with that district, and also the Ohio River area, and make that one senatorial district. And then the, uh, the other areas, such as, say, Barbersville and Milton, they would go into a district of Lincoln County. And again, the people there would have a shot, uh, not a guarantee, but a shot in a uh, district composed of all of Lincoln, all of Boone, part of Raleigh, and part of Cabell, of elected a, a second senator from Cabell County. But split up Wayne County, to me, makes no sense. Why was it done? It was done because the, some of the districts in the southwestern part of West Virginia, uh, even if they ever did have 134th, I mean, 117th or 116th of the population, they don't anymore. If you look at the figures, if you add up Mingo, Logan, Wyoming, and McDowell counties, they're just a little bit over 109,000 together. The state constitution says that where you can, you try to approach numerical perfection, you try to have a compact district, and you try not to cross county lines. 